Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, The Lazy Bookworm. I hope you are all doing well. This video, I'm going to talk about what I read in December. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, December seems like an eternity ago. Technically, of course, it was last year, 2022. But um, I realized I hadn't done a wrap up for December, and I'd actually read quite a lot of books in December. I was actually surprised how many I read. Two of them I technically finished in January. I finished them on New Year's Day, but I'm going to count them as I read them in December. I've already done a bit of a December wrap up when I did my sort of Christmas vlog video, which I'll link somewhere up here. Uh, where I talked about the books I've read for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. So I will just quickly run through those. I won't really give you much details. Um, but for Cloak and Dagger Christmas, I read Pride and Premeditation by Tirza Price. Apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, that was a retelling of Pride and Prejudice um, in a sort of mystery setting. The other book I read was Lady Orderly Secret. I finally got to read that. Um, wasn't as impressed with it as I thought I would be. Um, the next book I read for Cloak and Dagger Christmas was The Diviners by Libba Bray. I actually listened to it via audiobook and it's the first in the, the Diviners series. I think the next one I read was The Key to Deceit by Ashley Weaver. This is... I liked it. It was good but it wasn't great, you know. And that's sort of set in World War Two, I think, in 1940. Um, and for the sort of wildcard read that we had to do, I actually read a non-fiction, and that was The Betrayal of Anne Frank, A Cold Case Investigation. Cloak and Dagger Christmas aside, here are the books I read in December. Now, the first section I got is going to deal with books that I started in November, but I finished in December. Because, as you know, with me, oftentimes I start a book in one month and I kind of finish in the next month. Um, and the first one is Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe or Akebe. Um, this is the first book in the African trilogy, and this is about a sort of young man in this African village who kills someone, and so he is banished from his village. He returns years later to find his village has changed. The white people have come, the colonizers have come, and their presence has started to affect um, uh, his village. I really actually liked it. Um, I've never really read much um, literature from Africa, and that's something I'm hoping to kind of rectify. And I haven't really read much literature about sort of colonization and perhaps more importantly decolonization, which again is something that I hope to rectify. And this is a really good book. Um, I kind of would like to read the other two books. Um, another book I finished in December is Down in the Valley of Rice's Landscape by Laurie Lee. This is a series of his recollections, particularly from his childhood. A lot of the stuff that's in here was inside of Rosie. Um, to be honest, I liked the book. It was quite a short book. Um, but in many ways, I think if you've read Side of Rosie, you may not need to or want to read this. But I did like it. And relating to Laurie Lee, another book I finished in December was As I Walked Out One Midsummer's Morning. This was the... This is the second in his autobiographical trilogy. The first obviously being Cider with Rosie. And this one chronicles him from when he left his village of Slade in when he was, I think, 19, um, to go first to the south of England and I think then to London. I think it's that way. And then on to Spain. And this sort of details his trip particularly to Spain and this this happened before the Spanish Civil War so yeah I really like this um I think I liked it a little bit more than Cider with Rosie maybe because I'd heard so much about Cider with Rosie but I hadn't really heard much about this one so I came a bit more new to this one 
Another book I finished in December was My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. This is my first Daphne du Maurier book um, I read. In fact, actually, I didn't read it technically. I listened to it via audiobook, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's basically about this young man, Philip Ashley, who uh, has this uncle who goes to Florence, and he meets their cousin, Rachel. Um, and his kind of uncle slash guardian marries Rachel and his uncle unfortunately dies in Florence and Philip inherits his estate and soon afterwards his cousin Rachel arrives and this book it's sort of like a mystery but not a mystery I think in a real sort of whodunit sense. Another book I finished is and if you can see this Charles Dickens Oliver Twist. I plan on doing a full length video about this so I will not talk much about it except that I actually unexpectedly liked it. So the books I started in December that I finished in December obviously is the first one is September the 1st, 1939, A Biography of a Poem by Ian Sam Sansom. This book is about um, W.H. Auden's famous poem, September the 1st, 1939, which is all about the outbreak of World War II. It also is a poem that has been very influential and it even was read out, I think, in a memorial service for September the 11th. I didn't really like this. It was okay. If you're really into Auden, I would recommend it. The next book I read was The Cruel Way by Ella Maillart. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Right. Sorry. This is a travel book. Um, I've been getting into reading travel books lately and this is so interesting. This is about these two women, Ella Maillart and um, Anne Maria Schwarzenbach who in 1939 set off an adventure through Europe into Turkey and Afghanistan. Now, for me it's amazing that two women would even want to go to Afghanistan, but I've only known Afghanistan basically, you know, war-torn. This was a really, really fascinating book. Um, it was fascinating to particularly when they went through the Middle East and Afghanistan. And it also was fascinating their sort of interactions together. Another one is Travelers in the Third Reich by Julia Boyd. This is about people who traveled to the Third Reich um, more from 1933 to 39. She did include some that traveled during the war years, but it was more pre-war. Um, this was really fascinating because she included like a lot of diplomats, particularly a lot of British diplomats. Um, but she also did include a lot of just, I'll say, ordinary people. Uh, she included a lot of people who traveled um, to Berlin for the Olympics. Um, but there was also a lot of accounts from, say, what you'd call scout groups, um, different groups that went to Germany for kind of educational purposes. It was really interesting how these travellers responded to what was going on in the Third Reich, in particular the continuing persecution of the Jewish people. Some people uh, were really struck by it, um, where some just actually just ignored it. Um, and some were, if not supportive, didn't really condemn it. The next book I read is Heart of a Dog by Mikhail Bugakov. I don't know, but I'm hoping to read his famous The Master and Margarita this year. So, so I thought I would start off with one of his smaller works, Heart of a Dog. This is a sort of really weird sci-fi novel about this professor in Moscow who discovers a stray dog and decides to do this um, experimental surgery where he sort of merges a dog and a human together. So it's like a human dog. And the sort of fallout from that. Um, 
it's absurd apparently it's a commentary on so the Soviet Union and the Russian Revolution I'm not sure if I'm really into Bulgakov I don't know if I really get his kind of sense of humor but um, it was an interesting read and as I said I'm hoping it will prime me to read his masterpiece The Master and Margarita uh, the next book I read was um, To Hell and Back, um, Europe 1914 to 1949 by Ian Kershaw. This book actually I started in November. So I should have said this earlier, but anyhow, um, I started this book in November and I finally got to finish it uh, in late December. It's basically an overview of Europe um, from 1914 to 49. It's not, it's it's kind of reasonably in depth but not super in depth and obviously it focuses a lot on Germany and Britain but I actually liked it when he talked a lot about some of the smaller countries like he talked quite a bit about Spain but he also talked a lot about Czechoslovakia and Poland the two last books I finished in December I technically finished in January and the first one is The Six Wives of Henry VIII by Alison Weir this is a chunky book um i really enjoyed this book um and i'm hoping to read hillary mantel's wolf hall this year so i feel it's a good sort of primer for that it chronicles obviously the six wives of henry the eighth and it focuses a lot on particularly his first two marriages with catherine of aragon and anne berlin i found that interesting but i feel i know quite a lot about his first two wives. The section I really actually enjoyed was about his last wife, Catherine Parr, and I thought it was really good because in a lot of the documentaries I've seen um, about Henry VIII and where they talk about his wives, it's they talk about Catherine Parr and then as soon as Henry dies it's like, well that's it, you know, and I'm always like, well, what happened to her afterwards? And so it actually chronicles what happened to her afterwards. Apparently she got married again. And she also became very close to the future Queen Elizabeth. And the last book I read in December, which okay, I technically finished in on January the 1st, but I'm going to count it as reading in December, is Barbarossa, How Hitler Lost the War by Jonathan Dumbleby. I had been seeing this in my bookstore for a while and it looked really intriguing. And fortunately my library owned a copy of it so i just got it out from the library it is basically about hitler's failed invasion of the soviet union in world war ii which he named operation barbarossa the book kind of goes from like the 30s to say 1942 43 i know it's been a very long video apologies in advance that was what I read in December. I was actually amazed that I actually read more than I thought I did. I will see you next video.